Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> we begin this morning with our affirmation for peace in the Middle East, which we say each week in solidarity with our Muslim and Jewish brothers and sisters. I need some air. <laughs> Recognizing that we are all people of the book. And so we greet one another. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. Peace be upon you. Upon you, peace. Shalom aleikum. Aleikum shalom. Well, I'm Michelle Vargas, and it is my joy and honor to welcome you here this morning. So today is the second day of Christmas. It is Boxing Day in <laughs> British countries that celebrate that. <coughs> For the Amish, it is second Christmas, and for African Americans, it is the first day of Kwanzaa. So it's a very auspicious day, and I welcome you this morning to Unity of Monterey Bay, a beloved community co-created with love and intention. And whether you are here with us in person, and I'm glad that you all are, whether you're watching us on the live stream or watching it later um, at another time on YouTube, we just want you to know that we welcome you here and that love knows no boundaries. So it doesn't matter if we are separated by space or time, we are all one in spirit. So in this awesome Christmas spirit, let us affirm together. Thank you, God, God for this most, most amazing, amazing day. day. Miracle, miracle follows miracle. miracle. And, and wonders never cease. Unity of Monterey Bay is an inclusive <clears throat> spiritual community committed to co-creating an environmentally sustainable, spiritually fulfilling, socially just and compassionate human presence on this planet. We celebrate our oneness and we honor the God of each of our understanding, affirming the innate good and divine essence that is within each and every individual. Will you please join me now in our statement of faith? There, there is, is only one presence and one, one power in the universe, universe God the good, good expressing, expressing as infinite God beyond us, intimate God beside us, us inner God, God being us, divine, divine love in action. action. So let's begin now with a moment of prayer. And I share with you this morning this Church prayer for Kwanzaa. O come all you faithful, rejoicing and victorious. Come, let us embrace the mystery in the spirit of life. As we celebrate the goodness of Kwanzaa and the African American heritage. Come and give thanks for companions on the journey in the struggle for freedom and justice. Our roots in the soil and soul of Mother Africa reach far and wide. Creator of us all, let us to be true to our nature with respect and dignity for life from conception to its natural end at death. Amen. Amen. This is the time in our service when we bless our children. And I, I don't know if they're downstairs. They may already be downstairs, but beholding those bright lights that are part of our community, those that are part of our own lives, our own inner children, and all of the children around the world. Will you join me in our blessing? We, we love, love you. you. We, we bless, bless you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you just the way you are. take a few moments to center ourselves and to deepen our blissful inner connection with spirit. So let's all take a deep breath in and let it out with an audible sigh. I don't know about you, but I feel like I need one more of those this morning. So let's take another deep breath in and we're going to let go all of the stress 
and all of the little complications and getting ready, we're just going to let it all go. So taking a deep breath in, ah, so that we can bring ourselves present to this sacred moment and to this sacred space within. So let's allow all distractions to fade away as we allow the chime to call us into this sacred moment. We ring the chime four times to call in the four directions and to remind us of our interconnection with all of creation and with the sacred circle of life. As we feel it resonate through our very beings, we follow its call into this now present moment within. Focusing on our breath with each inhale, we open our hearts and minds. We envision our breath reaching every cell of our being. And with each exhale, we see all barriers and obstacles dissolving into the divine flow. And again, as we inhale, we expand the spaciousness within us. We move beyond the limitations and boundaries of our bodies. And as we exhale, we ground ourselves deep within Mother Earth and into our oneness with the universe. Finally, we breathe our awareness into the highest expression of love, light, joy, and peace we can imagine. And as we experience a transforming wave of gratitude, with a fullness of heart, we say yes to it all. Embracing, claiming, and knowing the divine Christ spirit expressing in, through, and as us. And now with a final exhale, we say thank you, God. So now, fully centered and transformed by the power of spirit, we enter into our lesson and meditation time with today's daily word. We read from today's Daily Word, shared with the permission of Unity, publisher of Daily Word, that can also be found at dailyword.com. And the word is faith. I invite you to allow my words to be your words. My inner light grows brighter through faith. I remember that those times that, that at those times when my life feels dark, I have the power to live from faith, which brings me out of spiritual darkness. Faith helps me believe that even when I can't see it, the light of God is always shining. Little by little, my awareness of God grows, increasingly brighter until I perceive, perceive the divine everywhere. I am a spiritual being inseparable from God. I place my faith in his truth and drive out the darkness of fear and doubt that may have caused me to shrink from the fullness of life. Shining my light in the world, I inspire those around me to grow brighter with faith. And from scriptures, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. John 12, 46.
In witness to the wisdom of the many paths to the sacred, we read from three sacred traditions on this morning's topic, unity and community. From Native American religions, my children, listen well. Remember that you are brothers, that the downfall of one means the downfall of all. You must have one fire, one pipe, one war club. And from African traditional religions, It is because one antelope will blow the dust from the other's eye that two antelopes walk together. And from Judeo-Christianity, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Psalm 133, 1. Winter is here, so Kwanzaa Celebrating joy and love as a happy family. Join us in our greeting with seven days of holiday. Sharing all our gifts and love in a happy gathering. Happy Kwanzaa! Happy Kwanzaa! Love and peace from me to you. A body joy to you and ask what's new. Peace be unto you, good things come true when you spread your joy and love in a happy family. Self-determination, living as a nation too, we're all one relation and live in harmony. Happy Kwanzaa song. <sighs> well, I just want to thank all, you know, everybody for just coming together and Colleen stepping up to do the platform. She wasn't planning to do that. And Kay stepping up to do the PowerPoint. And my gosh, poor Martha, we got her out of bed and dressed. To, well, I don't know about out of bed. <laughs> we got her dressed and down here to do the live streaming and um, John helping, everybody helping us to make this happen. So, You just proved the point of my sermon, which is the importance of community, and there's no better example of that than right here at UMB, where we truly are a community. And it really does take, it's not a cliche, it really does take a village, it takes everybody here. I can't do all of this, you know, no one can do all of this, and so this is something that we come together to create together, and that's what makes it special. And as I always say, it's not about it being a perfectly polished performance. That's not what we're about. We're about coming together to be that beloved community together. So that's what we're here to do today. We had our beautiful winter solstice candlelight celebration on Tuesday night. And it's always a very touching service to me, but this year it was especially touching. Am I right? Yeah, Colleen says she (laughs) she felt it too. I wrote a little bit about this in my minister's message in our um, e-blast this week, so if you haven't read that yet, check it out. But the gist of it is that I get sentimental sometimes and I start having these ideas about things, but I was thinking as we were all here, you know, it was a a cold, kind of rainy night. It wasn't raining, but it was going to rain, and, uh, you know, all this Omicron stuff is going on and life is a little bit crazy, but we were all here gathered together around this ritual of light. And that was so touching to me. It's always touching. The, the candlelight almost always makes me tear up. There's something very primal and beautiful about that light. And so I don't know if it was just that we were celebrating that, you know, <laughs> I'm a summer person, so I'm happy when the days start getting longer. Like, it's like tip over that December 21st and we're headed towards my favorite season again of spring. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the winter, you know, so I'm happy that we're over that hump and we're moving in that direction. 
But I think also the fact that we are now beginning to close in on two full years of dealing with this pandemic crisis. And so I think that that coming together around that, that light was especially touching to me this year. And as we were holding up our lights, you know, we're gathered around the piano and we're singing. And I was thinking about, because this is just what I do, I was thinking about the ancient peoples, you know, and, and how these rituals around light that we celebrate in the dead of winter, how, how they must have gotten started a really, really long time ago when they didn't know for sure if the light was going to return. You know, we know now, we understand. But the ancient peoples, you know, they may have wondered whether the light was ever gonna come back, you know? And as the, the, the winter days drug on, these rituals must have been extremely important for them. And so I was just struck by that beauty of all of us coming together and holding up the light for one another, reminding one another and ourselves that we were still here. We have made it through this thing, those of us that are here. And we are, we are holding that vision of the light returning, not just the light that will return when spring comes, but the light that we know is coming eventually when this thing is going to end. We don't know when that's gonna be, but we know it's coming. And we know that we will be, if not returning to normal, we will be collectively forging a new normal. And so I was especially touched by that. And if you've attended our solstice surface, and I think everyone here has, you know that um, it's a unique sort of interfaith service that honors the people of the four different directions, right? And acknowledges the contributions that each of those sort of symbolic directions have contributed, what they have contributed to our ongoing evolution as human beings and the evolution of our consciousness. And Walter gave a particularly dramatic and rousing reading, which I thought was really awesome, right? <laughs> Everyone's nodding, so, um, of the people of the South. And the people of the South is a representation for the indigenous peoples around the world. And in the reading that Walter gave, the people of the South are credited with having lived in harmony with the earth for millennia. But, the story tells us, that wisdom, that earth wisdom, has been subjugated by Western ways. The reading says, Our wise ones learned through deep listening to the songs of life, to the grasses and the rains, the mountains and the winds, the rivers and the oceans, the winged ones and the four-legged. And then the reading goes on to say that these songs of life that the wise ones listened deeply to, they remind us that we are not the weavers of this web of life, but merely a strand in it. And so I think that this is one of the great gifts of the indigenous wisdom of the people of the South, a more humble understanding of the cosmos and of our place in it. We can use that in the Western world, that we are not the center of the cosmos, but merely a part of it. And considering the global crisis that we are facing now with climate change, this is timely wisdom, right? And so in that vein, we turn today to look at the celebration of Kwanzaa, which we will see is also an honoring and a celebration of that same ancient earth wisdom. So today, December 26th, is the first day of Kwanzaa. And I thought that it would be appropriate for us to talk about it since Kwanzaa begins today. And also in light of UMB's ongoing commitment to fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion. It seemed to me that learning a little bit more about Kwanzaa was aligned with our own efforts that we've been engaged in for a few years now towards intercultural understanding and communication, such as the work that our church does with COPA, which is a lot about understanding one another and that communication. So as I begin to explore this, I realized that I really didn't know very much about Kwanzaa at all. 
And I figured that if I don't, then perhaps many of you don't know much about it as well. And I decided that it was, as usual, an opportunity for me to teach what I need to learn. Before beginning to talk about Kwanzaa, I want to say a few words about cultural appropriation. Because as I was debating about whether to approach this topic today, I had conversations with a number of people, and I checked in with a minister friend of mine who's sort of a specialist in um, diversity and those types of issues. I wanted to get some information from her, and I sort of found myself in this dilemma that exists around celebrating Kwanzaa for folks who are not African American. Is it even proper for me to get up here and teach about Kwanzaa, something that I don't know anything about and have no personal experience of? So we hear a lot of talk about cultural appropriation today in our culture, right? Basically, cultural appropriation is the plagiarism of indigenous cultures by non-indigenous folks, okay? That's sort of the gist of cultural appropriation. It's not, it's, it's when folks from the dominant culture sort of steal or take stuff from the non-dominant cultures, okay? So like racism, it doesn't really work in reverse. It's a one-way thing. And usually it's done without an understanding of the depth of those traditions and without crediting the people for whom those are their native traditions. So it's sort of a thievery of, of culture. And so I had various discussions with Vicki and uh, with Walter, and I decided that I would proceed to talk about Kwanzaa from an educational standpoint, but being very mindful of this cultural appropriation idea that for hundreds of years, the dominant Western European culture has mined indigenous cultures for profit and for its own agenda, right? Taking what, I'll say we, taking what we wanted, basically, using it with, for our own agendas without regard to the originators of those cultural traditions. All the while, as a, as a people, as a, I don't know, I don't know what I want to say. All the while oppressing those people who, whose traditions we are taking for ourselves. Does that make sense? So it's like, you know, wearing Indian headdress, but then continuing to oppress Native Americans. That's what I'm talking about. So when approaching a culture and talking about cultural things, a culture to which one does not belong, it is first and foremost important to acknowledge one's outsider status. So this means acknowledging that the cultural traditions and practices that I'm speaking about, while I may admire them and appreciate them, ultimately I have no direct experience of them and I have no cultural frame of reference for, no lived experience for understanding them. This is why when I talk about Day of the Dead every year, I always begin my discussion by mentioning that I'm not Mexican. That's important for me to locate myself as someone who is a deep and great and longtime student and admirer of Mexican culture, but not Mexican myself. That's how I avoid that cultural appropriation. So then I proceed cautiously and respectfully with an intention to educate myself and others but without claiming to have direct experience or ownership of those traditions. So this is why there's sort of a dilemma in churches about celebrating Kwanzaa for this very reason. And so today we are not celebrating Kwanzaa. We're not going to do a Kwanzaa ritual. We're not going to light the Kwanzaa candles. We're going to talk about Kwanzaa. So deep breath. <laughs> Kwanzaa is, a, and I had to learn all of this, so I've just learned all of this over the past couple of weeks, is a unique African-American celebration that focuses on traditional African values of family, community responsibility, commerce, and self-improvement. Contrary to popular understanding, it's not a political holiday and it's not a religious holiday. It's not a substitute for Christmas or for any other religion that one might practice. It is in addition to. 
The name Kwanzaa comes from the expression Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which is Swahili, meaning the first fruits of the harvest. And this holiday was actually created in 1966 by Dr. Maulana Karenga, who is a professor at Cal State Long Beach. And it was a response to the Watts Rebellion, which, as we probably know, was a violent clash between black people and law enforcement that occurred in Los Angeles. So Dr. Karenga was looking for a way to bring African-American people together, to highlight the values of people throughout, not just in the United States, but throughout what they refer to as the African diaspora. So African folks, people of African heritage living all around the world. To bring African Americans together as a community and to celebrate and honor their African heritage. To create the various elements of Kwanzaa, Dr. Karenga decided to use Swahili. And in, in the native language, this is called Ki Swahili. Swahili or Kiswahili is a Bantu language, which is widely used as a lingua franca in um, lots of parts of Africa, but specifically East Africa, a lingua franca being a language that a lot of people use to communicate with one another. And so I found out in my research that Swahili is one of two official languages of many countries such as Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. So it's sort of having that common language because those people speak different languages, English and French and such, and they can use Swahili to communicate with one another. And so the tradition that Dr. Karenga created is based on a traditional African harvest celebration. And it combines customs and values from a number of different African cultures. I found it interesting to read that according to the New York Times, Kwanzaa is now celebrated or observed by more than 18 million people worldwide. And I read in another source that one in seven African Americans celebrates Kwanzaa. So not all African Americans celebrate Kwanzaa, obviously, but one in seven do. So how is Kwanzaa practiced? Kwanzaa takes place each year, always between December 26th and January 1st. And it's typically practiced in the home, in families. But it can also be practiced in community centers and churches and things like that. Typically, the families gather each day to light a candle and to discuss the corresponding principle for that day. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So this belonged to Rory. We're not going to light the candles, but I wanted you to see what it looks like and, of course, invoke our beloved Rory. Someone gifted the candelabra to him, which is actually called a kinara. And there are seven candles to correspond to the seven days and the seven principles. And so each day, typically a child of the family has the honor of lighting the candle, and then the participants discuss or talk about that principle what it means to them and such. There are special greetings that are used traditionally, which are in Swahili. So each day when people begin the Kwanzaa celebration, they may say to one another, Habari Gani. <laughs> Isn't that what you say? Yeah, Habari Gani. And Habari Gani means, what's the news? Sort of like, what's up? What's the haps? And the answer to that is the name of the principal for that day. I think that's kind of cool. So Umoja or Ujima, Nia, Kuumba, whichever the principle of that day is. So what's the news? Today we're talking about community. What's the news? Today we're talking about self, um, now I can't think of the word. What's the word? Help me. Self-determination. So I think that's kind of cool. So that's the typical greeting. The cool thing about Swahili, and I don't know a lot about it, but I do have a little linguistic sort of interest myself. I studied linguistics as an undergrad is that it's a phonetic language. So it's really easy to pronounce these words. They're said just the way they look. So let's go through some of the elements. And God bless Kay, who is following along. OK, good. We got the right slide. So you can see all the various elements. So there are seven elements of Kwanzaa. And the first is the candles, the seven candles, which are called Mushuma, Mushuma Saba. So there's one black candle, three red, and three green. Now, black, red, and green, these colors represent the African-American people. 
And these colors were introduced it, for the first time by Marcus Garvey in 1920. He was a civil rights activist and the leader of the Pan-African Movement, which is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between African people in the diaspora. So African people all around the world of all different indigenous and ethnic groups. And these are the colors of the Pan-African flag, and you will also see them if you look at the, they are incorporated to many of the flags of um, the African, various African nations. So you see those colors over and over again. They have that deep meaning. The black candle in the middle is also known as the unity candle, and it represents the people themselves. Incidentally, in my research, I came across a movie called The Black Candle. Have you seen it, Walter? I, I had it opened up on my, in a window in my computer to watch last night, and I was too full of Swedish meatballs to watch it, but I'm going to watch it this next week because it is narrated by Maya Angelou, and it's directed by M.K. Asante Jr. It's called The Black Candle. Black Candle, a Kwanzaa celebration, and it is the first feature film that has ever been made about Kwanzaa. So nothing narrated by Maya Angelou could be bad, right? So I encourage you to check that out. It, um, it's on YouTube, and it also can be live streamed on um, Amazon Prime. So that's what the black candle is. It's the, sort of the most important, the center one. The red candles represent the struggle or the bloodshed of the past, and the green candles represent the earth, and the abundance of possibilities that the future holds. Everything is very symbolic in Kwanzaa. I love that. As I mentioned, the candle holder is called a kinara. It's not a um, menorah. It's, it's completely unique to Kwanzaa. And typically, this is placed on an umkeka, which is the placemat that should typically be made of straw, but could be made of cloth. And these should be traditional African straw or cloth and represents the historical foundations of African Americans' lives. Because this is a, it comes from harvest celebrations, crops are also placed on the placemat, on the mkeka, and the crops are called mazao, and these are fruits and vegetables that symbolize work and reward. Then there are the ears of corn, which are called vibunzi, and the ears of corn typically ref reflect the number of children in the family. How cool is that? But here's the part that I love. Even if a family doesn't have any children, a minimum of two ears of corn are placed on the table to indicate that the children of the community belong to everyone and to represent that every adult in African tradition is considered to be an immediate or social parent. I love that, and I know this to be true because one of my very best friends is from South Africa. And Lucy, in, in our uh, social interactions with our kids and such, she always calls me Mama Michelle. And, and even friends in our group that don't have children, they get called Mama. Did anyone read the number one ladies detective agency books? Remember how it's always Mama? All the adult women are called Mama, Mama Ramatswe, Mama whoever. So that's that tradition that all women are mothers because we are all collectively responsible for the children of the community. And I love that. I think that's beautiful. The vibunzi, or ears of corn, symbolize fertility, reproduction, and the communal action of raising a child. The next element is the communal unity cup, which is called kikombe cha umoja. And each night during the, the ceremony and the kinara lighting, the unity cup is typically filled with fruit juice, which is passed around among everyone so they can take a sip. This tradition symbolizes remembering and honoring the ancestors. Each day of Kwanzaa, one candle is lit to represent the principle for that day. And then that principle, as I mentioned, is discussed among the participants. On the first day, the center candle is lit. On the second day, the first red candle to the right of the unity candle is lit. And then the first, on the third day, the first green candle, and then alternating red and green each day until all seven candles have been lit on the final day. After the candle has been lit and the principle discussed, many, many families then celebrate with music, with drumming, with poetry readings, 
um, with singing. A typical song to sing is the Black National Anthem, which I think we've sung here, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And some families, many families do art. They create art as part of that um, community celebration. So this culminates on December 31st when there is a feast. I like that part. The feast is called Karamu, and this is one of the most important parts of the celebration because it's a community gathering and a cultural celebration. And so wherever this is happening, the venue is decorated with the red, green, and black colors and um, traditional African-American, African-Caribbean, and South American foods are prepared. During the Karamu feast, there is typically a ceremonial pouring of libation. This is interesting because I remember learning about some such ceremony in the Native American tradition when I was a child and went to a summer camp where we did this type of thing and we poured, there. so a pouring of libation is, a, is an indigenous practice. And often water is used because water is um, believed to be the, hold the essence of life. And so this pouring of libation from the communal cup is done in remembrance of the ancestors and it is poured in the direction of the four winds and then passed around. Folks either take a sip or probably during COVID time mimic take, taking a sip, right? But this is all ceremonial. And so then on the final day, Gifts are exchanged. The gifts are called zawadi, and this is on January 1st. And typically, gifts are exchanged between parents and children. And the gifts that are given are ones that encourage growth, determination, and success. And they are most often handmade gifts. And when a person accepts the gift, they are morally obligated to fulfill the promise of that gift. So let's talk now about the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Although many of the Kwanzaa principles are root, well, they are rooted in universal values, it's important, I believe, for us to understand and acknowledge that Kwanzaa as a practice is really unique to the experience of African Americans. Indeed, it was born out of the African American experience of struggle and redemption. And so non-African Americans can relate to the universality of these teachings and we can allow them to expand us and inform us without appropriating them for ourselves. So Walter, <laughs> are you willing to read? We, we, we missed our communication, but I had something that I wanted Walter to read. So if you don't mind, Walter, if you would read these seven principles and just tell us what each one is and read the, 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 the statement that describes each principle is stated in a first person plural meant to be read by African Americans. So it's not appropriate for me because I would be saying us and our when I'm not a member of that group. So uh, you want the light on? Can you see? <laughs> so these. Sorry. I, I, I want to preface this by saying that Kwanzaa is a non-religious, non-philosophical celebration based on seven principles which I'm about to read. The Nguza Saba, I, I, I came late if you don't talk into here, they won't hear you on the recording. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I came late up. because I was looking not only at Kwanzaa, I was looking at the principles that underpin unity. Mm -hmm. And I saw there was a difference between unity principles, the five basic principles, and the seven basic principles of Kwanzaa. Unity principles are spiritual and religious and philosophic. Kwanzaa is not that. Kwanzaa is a social, cultural, communal celebration supported by seven principles. The first principle. Oops, okay. The, s the first principle of Kwanzaa is Umoja. Unity. 
and it's the center candle in the kinara. And it's meant that black folks, black people, people of the global south, who strive for and maintain unity of the family unit, the communal unit, the provincial or state unit, and the national unit. We could expand that to go global, okay, which is my normal inclination. The second one, Kuji Chagulia, is self-determination. That can be taken personal, interpersonal, multipersonal. It says that I'm responsible with the assistance and participation of the community for how I determine my life to be and can be. And it's a green candle. It says you're allowed to define yourself, name yourself, create yourself, speak for yourself instead of being defined, created, spoken for, or spoken about. The third principle is Ujima, collective work. And I looked at what we do here. We get into a lot of collective work, mm -hmm. okay? So Ujima is not just an African-American principle in Kwanzaa. It's a universal principle. Like this church has the greatest amount, to my recollection, of participation in COPA, as small as it is. Mm -hmm. Every time, okay, you do ujima when kopa is being convened. Yeah. That's called collective work, okay? And it's collective work done in, outside, and beyond the community, beyond this community, okay? The next one is ujama, cooperative economics. We do that, I think she reads it, is what we have. What we give, something like that. Have, I love that yeah. three things. Okay? Collective. Enough to have, to give, and to share. Yes. Yeah. Cooperative <laughs> economics. And there's the announcement. We used to walk by, remember when we used to walk to the aisle and distribute the baskets? Well, COVID has stopped that. Have However, <laughs> the sentiment, the sense of cooperative economics mm -hmm. is still being held with the basket at the back of the church. Okay? And people have been very creative in sending money electronically. Okay? So cooperative economies are really something embedded in this church, okay? and you're simply being used, li listening to it, being expressed by another person, by another people. It says that to build and maintain our stores, shops and other businesses and to profit from them together. Yes, that's what we do here. Okay? The next principle is Nia, purpose. Oh, that's a big word. Mm -hmm. Personally, that's a big word. Uh, and I see, let me read what it says, to make our collective vocation Meaning, the things that we do, not the things that we say, the things that we do, the vocation, okay? the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. I wanted to see if, I, I went back in time to see where have I heard either Michelle or Vicky talk about Nia, purpose. And I came across the first principle of, of unity. It one says, power and one presence. God is good. God the good. Okay? I said, I, 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 I could have said, how did I know that? Well, from being with you is that you live it. You just don't say it. You live it. Okay? And you have affected and infected me with that. <laughs> it's virally part of me, now it's part of my DNA, mm. okay? To live the purpose for which unity is. God is good, and as above, so below, so are his people. Yeah. We do good. The next one is Kumba, creativity. Did I say anymore? Did I say anymore? Did I say anymore? 
Okay? It's bringing together all the creation that you have available, whether you made it or you bought it, and sharing it. Okay? Again, another interlocking connection with cooperative economics. Okay? So Mia says to make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. The sixth is kumba, creativity. I see it all the time. Uh, when Thanksgiving come around, you see it when she construct that tower to the dead. Okay? And lastly, we have Imani, faith. Let me tell you, I've had my faith tested in and out of this church even before I came to this church. And one of the things that I acquired from being around you was self-faith to start with because Vicky always thought that transformation and alteration and mutation of self starts from the inside and it manifests out. Okay? So I had to recapture, retrieve, reclaim my faith. Okay? And it goes to the first principle of unity. God is good. Our Muslim brothers would say, God is great. Mm. Okay? So Iman is believing with all our heart, all our soul, all our breath in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, our parishioners. And the righteousness and, and the victory of struggling daily to show faith, convey faith, and more. Live it. Okay? Live it. So, you know the symbology of Kwanzaa, the Tinara, the three red candles, the three green candles, and the middle one, the black candle. The three red candles represent the blood that's been spilled throughout by people of the global south. The green candles represent the creativity, the greenness of the earth, the richness of the earth, the bounty of the earth. And then the middle one. Would you like to light the middle candle since it is the first day? I would like to have seven people up. Well, it's not, we're only supposed to light the first candle for the first day. Okay. <laughs> Trying to do this properly here, Walter. <laughs> no. So, uh, I hope I, I've, I've affected you, you infected have. you, uh, not just philosophically, but also from in here, from where it says, where God is good, from in here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> thank you so much. So, it's obvious that there are universalities in these principles that we can all learn and grow from. And I, I read that the most important thing about the Kwanzaa celebration is, that, is its focus on community. This is such an important value, especially for the Western culture's obsession with individuality and independence, right? This idea that we need one another. And so going back to the reading that Walter gave at the solstice service about the ancient wisdom of the people of the South, the story that he read explains that for millennia, these people of the South have understood that interconnectedness of life and grasped that important idea that what we do to the web, we do to ourselves and our children, right? 
But the story warns, if you recall, that the world has stopped listening to these sacred songs and technology has spawned an ecological ignorance and arrogance. The world has lost its way. But through the language of the earth spirit, which is that ancient wisdom, we are offered a guide back home, right? And so this is what we learn from these ancient earth-based values, like the values of Kwanzaa, that come from that ancient African culture. It's that guide back home to a greater connection to the earth and to all living creatures and to one another. As we've talked about in this church with the exploration we've done with the Pachamama Alliance and such, these ancient traditions and values are what is needed today to save ourselves and to save our earth from the effects of having turned away for so long from that earth wisdom. This is what we need to come back to from years and years of having over relied on the intellect, on technology, having focused overly on material wealth and accumulation and having subjugated these ancient values for so long. And so just as Walter explained to me and explained to us, these traditional African values of Kwanzaa are not just for Africans. If we ourselves can take time to respectfully learn about them and understand them and heed their ancient wisdom, they in fact will offer us a guide back home, a way for us to come back into harmony with the earth and with one another. Where's Larry? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Larry, would you, I had asked Larry to read a Kwanzaa prayer to close out our lesson today. Thank you, Larry. You get it? Okay. Gracious God, giver of life, thanks be to you for your many blessings and for the beauty of the bountiful earth, Kwanzaa. Forgive us for taking our many blessings for granted, pardoning us for abusing and exploiting your creation. We are not responsible stewards. Our, consum our consumeration, our consumerism and materialism hinder us. Merciful God, your creation groans for liberation. Let us be the first fruits of your spirit for a hurting world. Help us to transform our bombs into bread, our bullets into books, and count our blessings and name them one by one. Kwanzaa. Beautiful. Thank you, Larry.
So if you haven't already done so, I invite you to just get comfortable, begin to relax your body, just enjoy the lights being out and just being able to close your eyes gently and rest quietly for just a few moments as we spend time together in this communion of the spirit in this experience of being in the present moment, breathing in deeply, feeling the heart rate slow, exhaling and just experiencing that feeling of release and letting go. Continuing to breathe deeply and fully, nourishing our bodies with that breath of life, bringing calm and peace to our bodies, to our minds, to our souls. As we experience that feeling of being in communion with one another, that connectedness, that belonging, that deep sense that the soul rejoices in when we say to ourselves, I belong here. These are my people. I am a part of. I am loved here. I am accepted here. I can be who I am. I can share who I am. In this place of deep rest and belonging, I share with you a Kwanzaa meditation from the Ifa Yoruba tradition. Let us not engage the world hurriedly. Let us not grasp at the rope of wealth impatiently. That which should be treated with mature judgment let us not deal with in a state of anger. When we arrive at a cool place, let us rest fully. Let us give continuous attention to the future. Let us give deep consideration to the consequences of things. And let us do this because of our eventual passing. And so I invite you now to just allow this ancient wisdom to seep deep into your soul as we rest for a few moments in the silence.
we give deep thanks for this time of learning, of communing, of belonging. We are so grateful. We say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Unity of Monterey Bay is the collective consciousness and commitment of all of us who give of our time, treasure, and talent in order to sustain this spiritual community that is dedicated to transforming lives. We know that prosperity is a state of mind that finds blessings in every situation and abundance in joyous generosity. We transform all appearance of fear or lack into faith-filled peace of mind by shifting our attention to thoughts of gratitude for the abundance of God's good in our lives. And with our hearts and minds overflowing with gratitude, we breathe into the divine flow of God's good, trusting that we are enough, that we have enough, and that there always is enough to both have and share. Again, we are grateful to all of you for your online giving through our website at uni unityofmonterey.org and through your mailed-in offerings, including those who have set up automatic giving with your banking institutions. For these, we are truly blessed. And now from this place of faith and gratitude, I invite you to join me in mindful intention and joining in our offertory blessing. I am an open channel for God's infinite good. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies everything I give and everything I receive. I am both blessed and a blessing. Thank you, God. As always, we like to thank the musicians whose music we have used today. So we thank Bob McGee and James McBride. McBride. Thank you to John Talon and Denise, as always. And again, just thank you to everyone who stepped up to help out today and make today's service happen. Thank you, Walter, for sharing with us. Thank you for Larry for reading the prayer. 
it was a group effort and I think it worked very well it and did. I'm very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> so for announcements today, have a little bit of a downer announcement that um, two of Vicky's children have tested positive, are having minor symptoms. Bree and um, Travis have both tested positive. Apparently Bree started having some symptoms on Thursday and so everybody went and got tested. Everyone was negative except for Bree and now Travis has also turned up positive. So the reason I tell you is just because they were both here on Tuesday night and clearly if they were having symptoms, if Bree was having symptoms on Thursday, then she probably had it when she was here. So um, not to freak anybody out because the rest of them that have been around them for a week tested negative. So who knows how this um, works, but um, they are going to continue to, they're isolating and they're going to continue to get tested and hopefully everyone else will continue to be negative. But, um, you know, if you were here on Tuesday and you were gathered around the snack table, you might want to get a test. Just And apparently what I'm hearing now is these mild cold symptoms, sneezing, runny nose, a lot of times actually is Omicron, especially if you're um, vaccinated and boosted, as Brie and all of them are. Um, that's the kind of symptom. So is it a cold? Is it Omicron? The only way to know for sure is to get tested. And I know they have free testing at the airport, which you can actually just drive right up and get tested. So not to freak anyone out, but just for full disclosure, I wanted everyone to know that. So let's just hold Vicki and her whole family in our hearts and just see, you know, so far the symptoms are really mild because of being vaccinated and boosted. And hopefully that will continue to be the case. And um, I'm already planning to do the service next week. So I'm assuming Vicki will be out for a while. She'll need to be quarantining, but um, hopefully the rest of us will remain well. So everyone take care of themselves. As we bring our service to a close this morning, we are so grateful that you have decided to join us, whether you're here live or virtually, and we just hope we've made you feel at home in our Unity of Monterey Bay community and want you to know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, including all of you, wherever you are today, you are welcome here, and that's the beauty of this beloved community. Who is the chaplain today? Larry. Larry is our chaplain on duty today who's available to pray with you. And um, as always, our chaplains are holding the high watch for our community, so you can submit your prayer requests on the website or in the um, little forms in your pews. They can go in the box back there, and all of that will be held in consciousness. So we are grateful for that service. Let's form our closing circle for our prayer for protection and our peace song. And Desmond too, too. Oh, Aww. that's sad. Thanks for reminding me. I love that man. Mm -hmm. Yes, the passing of a great. So I'm going to put this on since we're all together. And so you guys know the drill. I'm not going to lead the prayer. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holding our beloved community and like I said, especially Vicky's family in our hearts as we begin our prayer for protection. God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Ever we are. All 